Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Florian and this is a screencast uh, which is a recap of my tutorial at this year's O'Reilly Open Source Convention, OSCON 2013 in Portland in July. The tutorial was called the OpenStack Tour de Force in which we set up an OpenStack cloud in no time from scratch using Puppet. If you want some background information about this presentation, go to www.hestexo.com slash OSCON 2013, which expands to the URL at the bottom of your screen. Uh, or you can just snap a picture of this QR code and let your phone take you there. If you're wondering just who the heck I am, my name is Florian Haas. I'm one of the co-founders of Hestexo, and you can find my corporate bio at the top link that you can see here. The bottom link uh, is uh, my Google Plus profile, so by all means, please feel free to connect with me there. There's also my personal email address, and I'm one of those strange holdouts that don't maintain a personal pr Twitter presence, but if you would like to be notified of future screencasts, tutorials, trainings, conference presentations, and other things that we participate in, please make sure to follow Hestexo on Twitter. Let me give you a very brief rundown of the OpenStack architecture in case you're not intimately familiar with it. OpenStack is, of course, an OpenStack cloud platform written in Python and licensed under the ASL2. Uh, OpenStack consists of a number of subcomponents, which I'm going to give you a brief overview for. So, there's the OpenStack Identity Service. Codename Keystone provides user authentication, authorization, and access control, and also maintains the OpenStack Service Catalog. One of the many OpenStack services in that catalog is the OpenStack Image Service, codenamed Glance. This is where we keep our master images of virtual machines. Those we then instantiate in the OpenStack Compute Infrastructure, codenamed Nova. OpenStack Networking, previously codenamed Quantum, now Neutron, provides networking within the virtual environment and connectivity to the outside world. OpenStack Block Storage, codenamed Cinder, provides persistent block storage to VMs. And we can optionally also use OpenStack Object Storage, codenamed Swift. All of this is presented via a unified user interface which is web-based, called the OpenStack Dashboard, codenamed Horizon. When you look at this architecture, it sort of naturally lends itself to the concept of node roles. Node roles are classes of nodes in an OpenStack cloud. A node is any physical box in an OpenStack cloud, and uh, node roles are atomic in the sense that while they consist of a set of services, those services are usually not broken down further. The entire set of services is um, presented and installed and deployed on a single node, but the node roles are also composable, which means that a single node can happily maintain and run several of these node roles. First node role I want to introduce you to is the infrastructure node. The infrastructure node runs a relational database and a message queuing server. Anything that is persistent information that needs to be stored across multiple OpenStack nodes goes into a relational database. Anything that is volatile goes into a message queue. By convention and by default, most people will be using MySQL for the relational database and RabbitMQ for the message queuing server, although there are other options available. This tutorial also uses MySQL and RabbitMQ. Then we have authentication nodes. Those run Keystone, the OpenStack Identity Service, which provides authentication and the OpenStack Service Catalog. The Service Catalog contains essentially a list of RESTful API endpoints for OpenStack services, and those API endpoints are provided on an API node. All of the OpenStack services have uh, RESTful APIs, which means you interact with them using HTTP and HTTPS, using standard HTTP methods, and bouncing around JSON objects. Then we have the controller node, which provides scheduling and registration services that are internal to OpenStack. We, of course, have a network node, which provides network connectivity within the cloud and also outside the cloud to public networks. We have compute nodes, usually several of them, which host and run virtual machines, aka Nova guests, 
And we also have block storage nodes, which manage and provide persistent block storage to our guests. Finally, we have a dashboard node, which provides a unified user interface to our cloud admins. In this tutorial, um, we are following an architecture that I'll explain briefly. We have one node, which is sort of our master node, which combines six of the aforementioned roles. It's called Alice. It's our infrastructure, authentication, API, controller, storage, and dashboard node. There is no necessity that we coalesce all of these roles onto a single node. We might as well have distributed them across several. But in this case, for the sake of convenience, we're putting them all on one. Then we have our node Bob, that's our compute node, and Charlie, that's our network node. And because we want to deploy all of this in a sane and automated fashion, we also have a Puppet Master node, which by convention we simply call Puppet. In case you're wondering what Puppet modules we're using here, those Puppet modules are developed on StackForge. StackForge is a platform of OpenStack contributing projects, that is to say projects that are in some way related to OpenStack but not part of the OpenStack project proper. One of the many projects on StackForge is a collection of Puppet modules for OpenStack. And those Puppet modules are obviously also available on the PuppetForge, which is a repository of third-party contributions of Puppet modules that are available to the greater Puppet community. One of the things that you're also going to find on StackForge is KickStack. KickStack is a thin wrapper around the StackForge OpenStack modules and it is primarily designed at making OpenStack deployment with Puppet really simple using those aforementioned node roles as a concept. That is on GitHub and uh, you are certainly very welcome to take a look at KickStack. In particular, I would like to encourage you to take a look at the documentation which is also conveniently located up on GitHub. Now, uh, we use the Puppet dashboard for managing our Puppet infrastructure uh, at a high level. And as you can see from here, this is a completely pristine Puppet dashboard. There are no nodes that are currently uh, in the configuration. We have a single group that is predefined here with a set of parameters that we can set globally for the entire group. But there are currently no nodes that have reported into the uh, dashboard. Um, and then we are also going to set up an OpenStack dashboard. That is, of course, not available at this time. Uh, it is one of the things that we are going to configure in an automated fashion from Puppet. Uh, this is our Puppet node itself. Very simple, Ubuntu 1204 LTS. The only thing that is not from the Ubuntu upstream repositories are the Puppet packages themselves. Those are from the Puppet Labs APT repository for the Ubuntu platform. Here are three nodes. That's Alice, and I'm going to have it register into Puppet and the Puppet dashboard here really quickly, and I'm going to do that with the other nodes as well. And here is Charlie. Of course, in a production setting, you would most likely run Puppet Agent not in the foreground from the command line, but you would have it running in the background as a system service. Once that has completed, we can take a quick look back at the Puppet dashboard. Where are we at? Here we go. And those should now have reported into uh, Puppet, that's it. And we can now add them to the Kickstack group. So that would be Alice, Bob, and uh, Charlie. There we go. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to dis distribute our node roles as previously discussed. So I am, this is our node named Alice. So on Alice, we're going to make this our infrastructure node, authentication node, controller node, API node, storage node, and also our dashboard node. Bob, that is our compute node.
And finally, here's Charlie. And Charlie is going to be our network node. So that's that. And we can now go back. And we're going to start our Puppet Agent runs again here on Alice. And we're going to subsequently do that on the other nodes as well. And now we're going to give Puppet a few minutes, and once those runs are completed, we're going to have a fully installed OpenStack cloud. And now that these Puppet runs have completed, a few minutes later, we have an OpenStack RC file that is configured here, which we can use There we go. We can use to source um, and do a, for example, keystone endpoint list. So uh, those are all of our endpoints that have been automatically configured here. And we can also go ahead, take our generated password, and take that to the OpenStack dashboard, which now is available. And we can log in using uh, our username and password here. There are a few things that I want to do with my installation right away. For example, I like to define a super tiny flavor, which I usually name M1 Nano, with one CPU and just 256 mega RAM. Really, really tiny flavor there. I also want to be able to log into my systems using my own uh, key pair. So I'm going to use SH to uh, export my public key here, which I can then toss in here. I also want to add a security group rule that I'm able to secure shell into all of my boxes. So there is all that. And what else do I want to do? I probably want to create some networks. Uh, and I'm going to use a, a pre-created script for that purpose. And there it is in our network topology. I have one internal network, which I've named AdminNet, and I have an external network called XNet. And um, I combine these or connect these with a router. Next thing we can do is we can actually upload an image. You could use any image you like. I'm going to use a simple Ubuntu cloud image. I'm going to call that Ubuntu 12.04. I have that locally here and I'm uploading it. That is a QCOW image and off we go. That is being uploaded and we shall see it in a moment when the upload has completed. Give it a few more seconds and there is our completed upload. That's our Ubuntu 12.04 image. So we can now go ahead and actually start launching an instance. So I want to boot off of my Ubuntu 12.04 image. I'm going to call it Ubuntu. I'm going to use my M1 Nano flavor here. And I'm going to want to be able to uh, log in using my secure shell key. I'm going to sign it to the admin network. And poof, 
off we go and uh, we can uh, launch this machine. What's happening in the background here is obviously the uh, image is now being transported over from our controller and API node over to our compute node named Bob and uh, once that process is completed and uh, the uh, network configuration has been adjusted for this virtual machine then it goes to the active state. And now this machine is active and booting, so let's take a quick look at the system log. Yes, that is a booting uh, virtual machine, and we're going to give it a few more seconds, and then we should be able to log into this box. So now this machine has in fact booted. Um, so let us quickly assign a floating IP address here that we're allocated from our external network. Associate that. And now that that IP address has been associated, we ought to be able to log into the machine. So there is a box named Charlie, and we're now going to log in as Ubuntu into 192.168.144.101. And there is that machine, and we should see a boot prompt in a few seconds. And that's all there is to it. That is a complete installation of an OpenStack cloud. In case you're interested, this is using um, provider router networking with the GRE tunneling in the background, so it's perfectly fine to have uh, multiple networks, multiple providers, multiple routers that we can configure here. This concludes this quick screencast. Um, I would like to uh, draw your attention one more time to uh, GitHub that is uh, in our Hastexo repository. It's named Kickstack. There is, of course, a README in there that you probably want to look into. Um, and I would also encourage you to take a look at what does Kickstack do, what do I need to run Kickstack, and how do I enable nodes for Kickstack. Um, thank you for watching, and see you next time.